What's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Allison's Wonderland, the show that takes you through the looking glass and down the rabbit hole into the wild world of animation and video games. Thanks to everyone that's joining live. Today we have um, our host, our our host is me, Allison Packard, and our guest is Terry Douglas. And I first met Terry um, when we were on, I was on her loop group doing the emoji movie. And Terry has so hundreds, literally hundreds of credits doing um, ADR for animated movies, a lot of um, feature films, television shows, you name it. So I'm really excited to bring her on the show today. Everybody, please welcome. Terry Douglas. Here we go. Hey, Alex. Hey, Hack Media. Hi, Terry. Hi. How's it going? There we go. <laughs> Can you see me? Good? Uh oh, you froze. There you are. Yes, you're perfect. I love. I love your background. It's so beautiful. Oh, thanks. It's just a screen. <laughs> so you've got a, a you cute know, little works. nook. Well, welcome to Alice Thank in Wonderland. You. How are Thank you? you so much for joining us. I am great. It is so good to see your face. You too. It's been a while. <laughs> I know, I know. Isn't it been strange? The last year and a half has just been strange. So <laughs> Yeah, and I'm really curious to see how um, the ADR world pivoted through a global pandemic and, you know, everybody previously well we'll get there <laughs> let me i want to kind of start at the at the beginning with you because i know you've been working in this business for so long um i was mentioning on my stories that i think you probably have more um adr feature film credits than anybody else in the whole wide world i mean <laughs> like have, is, there, is there a guinness record have you tr looked into that no, no, I think I've done about 65 animated features. Um, I don't know, I'd have to count them, but uh, it's been quite a bit. It's really a forte. I love working on them. It's so much fun. It's so interesting. Now, did you know when you were young that you wanted to use your voice as a living? You know what? It came around when I was a kid. I used to watch cartoons and I would imitate them or I'd imitate commercials or anim animals on commercials or birds or whatever was going on. And, uh, it kind of came around that um, that was something I was really interested in. Although I thought I was going to be a lawyer, and then that changed. <laughs> I went into did you go to school for that and everything? Um, I did. I went to college and uh, went to school, business school, and thought uh, at Cal State Fullerton and thought I was going to head to law school. And then I kind of veered off into a voiceover world, and it kind of happened fast. <laughs> Wow. So what, what did your parents think when you were like, mm, this lawyering thing seems to not be working out? What did they, were they on board? Well, actually, they... my mom thought I should go into real estate. And uh, you would look was... great on a billboard, though. You know, I got to say, <laughs> I would love to see well, your face you. on one of those benches. But that just wasn't me. You know, I've sang and danced since I was a kid. Um, I've done a lot of uh, voiceover, you know, as a kid doing various things and singing. And uh, my, my very first voiceover job when I was a kid in high school was working on the storybook ride at Disneyland. And I got to narrate the storybook ride going all the way through. Uh, Mr. Toad's little village there. And no so way. it was so much fun. One summer I did that and I sat on the little boat, my cute little dress and my knee highs and, and my little microphone and narrated to all the boat. And then I'd have them really going. And it was really fun to watch the crowd get, you know, really wound up and interested in what I was talking about. And then I'll clap at the end. And sometimes I would get boats that didn't speak English at all. Uh -huh. And that was a lot of fun because making them laugh and respond was even more of a challenge. So that was my first voiceover job. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's the type of stuff that's just so amazing to think, connect the dots and, and see how it all came about. So do you grew up out here in Los Angeles or Orange County? I did. I grew up in Orange County. And okay. uh I uh, have uh, lived in Los Angeles, lived in Orange County, you know, travel back and forth for family and friends. And so um, I'm a native Californian and wow. wanting to be in the business, I think, started with me since I was a little girl. Yeah. And uh, I got to see uh, the Brady Bunch perform when they were older and they had left doing the show. And uh, I was about the chief television cast of Brady Bunch. 
Yes, the original cast. When oh. they were old, they went on a tour and they wow. sang and danced. And I sat in the front row and watched them sing and dance. And I ran home and said, Mom, that's it. I know what I want to do for a living. I want to be an actor. So she says, well, you got to have a screen test. And I said, OK. So I ran upstairs, got the phone book out, and looked under screen. It was actually screen door company, but I didn't get it. And I called this guy up and I said, hi, my name is Terry Douglas and I need a screen test. And the man was quiet for a minute. And he said, honey, you got to go to Hollywood for a screen test. And I said, okay, bye. And I hung up and I ran downstairs and I announced to my whole family, I got to go to Hollywood and get a screen test. <laughs> oh my so God. That's, that's so where it good. started. Meanwhile, he's like, Pam. We got to change our name. <laughs> wow, you must have been such a precocious and a charming little child. Oh, well, thank you. Actually, I was a little quiet, but I mm -hmm. uh, was very silly and fun to be around and uh, very, very, very easygoing. And I loved listening to people's voices. And this is, I think, where all the looping started. And I had an aunt that had a very resonant, unusual voice and some other cousins just just different sounding voices. And I started then listening to voices. And I would be so annoyed, like in the old cartoons, remember the old Flintstones where you just see a tongue kind of moving and the mouth moves and the tongue moves? <laughs> they used to always freak me out. And so I started watching cartoons as a kid and I just loved them. I just loved yeah. the characters and that everybody was per, um, performing. And um, so it kind of started there when I was really young, being able to hear voices, which has helped me today. I'm very musical. I've played the flute and piano since I was nine years old. So um, oh, wow. I can read and write music and I sing. And so for me, um, I have an ear for listening to voice matches and, and things like that. And all just sort of came together as one career kind of boom one day. <laughs> all the little <laughs> elements. Here I am. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so did you have some favorite shows, cartoons that you loved growing up? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I just like them all. I would watch whatever was on. I was more into watching the old reruns of like uh, Bewitched and Gilligan's Island and I Dream a Genie and all of those really fun shows. And I think learning characters and learning how like I Love Lucy, you can go back and watch all of her shows. But though there are some amazing characters, people who are amazing characters and studying those as a kid by watching those people in the old movies you know, really helps you today as a voiceover performer. So I always tell people, you know, go watch old movies, go learn about the old actors and, and what they did in their characters and personalities, because of a lot of them can be useful in your voiceover work today. It's very interesting too, because you see, you see the characters and, and the note that comes back from casting a lot of times is grounded performances, but in comedy, everything is still a bit, uh, it's larger than life. And that, that's where a lot of that funny comes from. So finding a character that is still a big mm -hmm. personality and a big character, but grounded, you know, you can really see that in old sitcoms like I Love Lucy. Like, you know, if I you saw a woman like that in real life, you'd be like, wait a minute. But within <laughs> the context of that world, it's like, it's just, yeah, it feels so good. Exactly. Um, so uh, you played flute, you, you, you're very musical. Um, what age did you move, make the move to Los Angeles? Um, I got married in my 20s and we moved uh -huh. up to LA and that was my early 20s and that's what my big uh, uh, get to LA moment was and be able to audition and try out for things but I was really so wrapped up in being a paralegal for entertainment law and doing that sort of work at that point but I was recording and singing I had a, a band in my early 20s that oh, we no almost way. made it out there but uh, some things happened and derailed us, and it was very sad. Um, but um, I had had the singing and all of that still in me so much that I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't shake it. And so I had ran into a looping coordinator who has since passed away, so it's very sad. Um, but uh, she heard my voice. I went to um, Bob Bergen's, uh, uh, what did he do, uh, the SAG Conservatory? Uh -huh. I went to hear Bob Bergen speak at the SAG Conservatory, which is free and a lot of fun. And I went and sat and listened to him talk about animation. And, and then he mentioned Loopy for like four minutes, maybe two minutes. And uh -huh. I went, what? <laughs> I, that sounds interesting. And he says, ah, oh, don't worry. Nobody can get in. Don't bother with it. And I thought, what? <laughs> the challenge is mine. And so, boom, here I am. 
So I took on that challenge. So I really actually found out about looping and all that from Bob in his workshop and That's met so the funny. looping coordinator at the time who said, oh my gosh, you sound like a kid. You sound like a real teenager. And then wham, I started working and it just kind of took off until I started my own group. And then here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when did you start your own group? Because that's a big it's not, step. Yeah, in 95, 97, in that period of time, we started. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. so it's been a long time. It's gone really fast. <laughs> Was that challenging for you in the beginning to make that transition for, to um, having your own group? Um, it was really fun working with the loop group I was working in, but I think that with my skills um, vocally and hearing things as well as being super organized and creative, mm -hmm. that for me, I thought I have this other vision of how I would like to do this. And yeah. so for starting a group was a lot of fun and exciting and just taking off and doing that. Um, it just kind of happened fast. And you have to learn fast and learn on the road quick <laughs> what to do about things. But it just kind of came together naturally. I had the ear for it and the, 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 um, the voice work behind it and the casting work. I had worked as well when I was younger in a casting office. So oh, really? Commercials and models and all sorts of things. So I had had a lot of experience doing that, working in casting. So this all sort of came together with all the skills. You know, I sometimes it's like taking that leap of faith to yeah. get to the next level is scary. And it takes a lot of courage and it can be really uncomfortable. Did you find in the beginning that, that it was challenging? Oh, yeah. It's very challenging starting a, a business of your own, yeah. you know, especially when you don't know everyone and there's mm -hmm. already established people doing what you want to do. How do you get in there? So just one by one, job after job, you learn and you grow and you keep getting asked to do more work until it keeps growing. And um, so, yeah, it can be very frustrating as well. I don't advise people to go run off and start loop groups. I think you're more lucrative today working for everyone than trying to do it on your own. Uh-huh. Yeah. Plus, I mean, Terry's already got most of the guys in town, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for those of us, uh, the people on this, um, that maybe are not familiar with how looping and ADR works, could you just give us, like, a general overview? Oh, sure. So when, when you have a film, let's say a feature film, in, uh, we'll say live action, in the background, you see all the extras running around. Well, they usually just have a production mic, so they're picking up the production sound. And um, what happens is they need to have things clear. We might have airplanes flying by, you know, where you have Indians and soldiers running around in the background, and all of a sudden a plane goes flying by. So now we have to put in voices again for the extras in the background so that you don't hear the airplane. It needs to be on a separate track and not married to the production track. So we do a lot of fixes in that area as well. Or you might hear us at the airport. So uh, they will do a scene in an airport and we will be the flight people saying, you know, Flight 43, now boarding gate six. All passengers, please begin pre-flight boarding. So yeah, <laughs> so all of that starts to get recorded and put into the film where you wouldn't have heard it when they were recording it. So we now have to go back in and add those things. Sometimes a lot of actors and actresses can't make it to do all of their ADR. So there might be a line missing here or there, or they may not be able to scream, which is the case with a lot of actresses. So I'll bring in girls or myself who scream really well, and uh, <laughs> we'll take over dying or screaming and breaths and efforts for a lot of people, a lot of actors that uh, need that. So we'll fix the tracks in those ways as well, or we'll fatten tracks. So, so maybe the background, it only had maybe 40 extras that day and it's just down like 500 or more. And so I'll bring in a loop group onto a stage, a big recording stage. Um, and we stand on, a, on the floor in front of the big screen. We have microphones on the stage and behind us is a glass window. And usually the editor and the recordist are all back there. The EDR supervisor will be at this on the stage telling us what they would like. And then we stand on the floor and we record to the picture. So we're watching the film as we do it so that things will go into sync and that they make sense and that we know what we're looping or talking about. And sometimes with animation, we don't always get to see something. We see drawings. Sometimes we'll just have little stick figures running around, you know, <laughs> or they'll say we need 10 seconds of you guys being at a party, you know, you know, and they'll tell us what kind of party. So then we all start talking like we're at a party with each other. And then there's a lot of technical things that go about being on stage and how we make the sound sound like it's traveling and moving and the different ways we record the sound. It's so interesting. Um, I, I think one of the, the most interesting things that I discovered about looping is the more you know about the 
if you're coming in about a particular industry that the better the better you are, the better equipped you are, the better the production is. Meaning if you're looping for a medical drama, you're kind of expected to know all the jargon yes. that they would say in a hospital. So that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, so with my loopers, um, knowing ahead what the film is, if there was, you know, per se medical, then I would send them a big email <laughs> with their research list in there of everything they need to know, you know, whether we are dissecting brains or we have forensics or whatever's going on that day in the film, <laughs> you will need to come up with stuff because it is not scripted for us unless it's a specific PA or a specific announcement or something in the film that the director, the writers want in there, then they'll write that for us. But generally it's us bringing it. We, I might say, you know, I need a, a 10 second weather report, you know, mm -hmm. make it sunny. I'll, I'll, you know, all these different things and my actors will, Right. So being a looper isn't just a voice actor who shows up on stage and is given a script. We yeah. literally have to be kind of like college students and go out and research, 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 try to say that fast, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, bring in our research so that we can speak, like we can launch space shuttles, that we can, you know, uh, drive a tractor, you know, whatever it is. So all of those things play and that also, uh, sort of says how I am going to cast who comes in that day versus on how they can, uh, if they can do those things or not. And so <laughs> what um, resources do you recommend for people doing research for their loop, loop gigs? Well, when I first started, <laughs> we have to go to the library and we divide up the film and we'd have two weeks to go do research, which is really funny. Wow. Now today I might call you and say, hey, I have something for you in two days or can you work tomorrow afternoon? So basically you hop on the internet, you do mm -hmm. a lot of research. And I always think it's really great if you know people in the field. So I have a cousin that's a paramedic out in Virginia. <laughs> so I called him up and said, hey, Ted, you know, what happens when a guy has got a heart attack and you show up, you know? So and I'm writing like crazy, taking all the notes on what he's going to say at the scene. Uh, I've even taken a forensics class to learn what they say about blood spatter going on the wall. You know, so we try to do it as accurate as we can. And so um, yeah, so there's a lot of research. So if you know people in the industries, mm -hmm. you know, that might be in there. Um, I knew a, a rocket scientist, which really came in handy because I had to launch a pod and fly through space one time. <laughs> so <laughs> like those aren't words that are going to come to me. So a yeah. great looper is someone that knows a little bit about everything and, and can find great information and research and deliver it on the stage very real and naturally as if it were right there on the picture that the actor on the screen said it that it's just naturally it doesn't stick out it's just melts into the picture as part of the film and you have to take a lot of people to lunch <laughs> <laughs> thanks cousin ted <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um so, you, I mean, you have hundreds of credits, you know, clearly ADR and looping is such an important part of filmmaking, both animation and live action. Do you think, is there a difference between, um, I know you also loop for video games. Mm -hmm. And so what is the main difference between looping for a film and looping for a video game? Well, a film might be more days and usually we'll go eight hours at a film because there is a lot of work in a film and it could be days and days and days of work to get a film done in a background where a video game is generally four hours, four hour sessions. And I might only need just one four hour session to cover it or maybe two so we can do them quicker. Um, for the video games, a lot of it is very specific. So generally it's soldiers. A lot of soldiers. <laughs> Everybody fighting. Everybody yeah. fighting and yelling and it's soldiers. You know, or it could be space, which has been a lot. We've had a lot of those lately. And so um, that will jurisdict who comes on to those um, projects as well, who has the voices for those. Uh, but a feature film, um, I, I believe, is more in depth with the work because we mm -hmm. have to do the research, or I do actually, <laughs> of what is the theme of the show? Do I need a ton of foreign language people or are, mm -hmm. you know, speaking languages or doing accents or kids? So it's a bigger variety of people that are needed generally for film. Mm. And how big is your database of talent? I mean, if you need foreign uh, <laughs> language and animation people and... It must I be have weird. thousands in my thousands. database. So, yeah, I try really hard to use, you know, a very mix of people, <laughs> uh, different people. Uh, 
kids always change ages. So I have to look for new kids. They're not always going to be that seven to nine year old, you know, they start to grow up. So, so whatever category I'm looking for, that's how I plug people in. Um, So I have a huge database of foreign talent as well as um, American speaking talent. And does Loop Troop, your ADR casting agency, do you guys have a particular niche? Um, It seems like you have your hand in a lot of different pots. Yes. um, I think, my niche would be animation for sure. Um, I love it as a voice talent as well. I love doing animation and characters and kids and all sorts of crazy creatures and fun things. So that's a big interest for me. And so I've tapped into that pretty well. Um, I also have a group of animation talents such as yourself that come out and play and we have formed, you know, really amazing stellar loop groups out there with amazing talent on the stage. Uh, so that's that's very different. Uh, so I would say that's probably one of my favorites. But I do yeah. a lot of Star Wars movies, which are a lot of fun, a lot of Marvel and Star Wars movies in space and um, having a wonderful time at doing those. Yeah, I mean, you're, yeah. you're um, Star Walk, Rise of Skywalker, a Star Wars story, Battlefront 2, the video game. I mean, you go in deep <laughs> and the Pixar and so really Disney Pixar and Star Wars you kind of the are... Marvel and yes and we and also have a lot for DreamWorks with the trolls and oh, all yeah. of those cute yeah all those fun movies so uh, it's pretty spread out and Smurfs and so it's been a lot of fun working for all the studios and all the different directors and Everybody yeah. puts so much energy into their work and into their movies, and it takes so long to get films out. So it's really, it, it's it's fun at the end. That's when I come in, um, you know, when it's pretty much locked and it's ready to go, then we can put our looping in there. Um, yeah. So everybody's pretty much stressed out by then, <laughs> working pretty hard to get them done. So. It, it's always amazing, too, uh, at least the, the shows that, um, the movies that we worked on, Toy Story and Emoji. I, what I remember is just how grateful everyone is. And <laughs> you think, we are just this teeny little piece of your giant production. And, you know, your team's been working for years on this film. And, and they're like, thank you so much. And it's such an amazing experience to be working with the team and working on the set and yeah, it's so fun. And then, yeah, just the the being able to improvise and think quick on your feet is something that I feel um, scratches an itch that scripted television doesn't always. Yes. You know, it's like, Oh yeah, you're thinking fast. Like it's almost (laughs) like, I don't really play sports, but if I did, I would like insert a good sports analogy here. It's like playing ball or something, you know, I'm like, Terry, you know, and then you guys, uh, if I remember, you know, you have um, different things like a donut and um, different ways that you move around the stage to make the voices sound like organic movement. Can you talk about that? Because I think it's really interesting. Oh, sure. And one thing about improv, it's really imperative if you want to try looping that you are a really good improviser. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, it's not scripted. You have to go home and write things yourself, or sometimes you're handed something that's scripted. But uh, you definitely need to be an excellent improviser because um, we are asked to do some of the craziest things (laughs) that you can imagine. And you really need to be able to go there. You need to make it real and you need to go there and you need to be able to play. And so you don't want to be locked up. So you definitely want to do that. And I'm sorry, what was your question? (laughs) Oh, yeah. So improv, yes, crucial element. Oh, moving on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry. The the dan- the Terry dances. And... <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, we do something called a donut. So we'll have the microphone right here. And uh, we have the actors walk in a circle in front of the mic like this. So it's recording us trying to show you sideways here. <laughs> yeah. um, so what happens is it sounds so cool. like the, the sound is traveling by. It's giving a Doppler mm-hmm. sound. So it sounds like it's moving. So when the editors place that in a film, the sound sounds like it's moving past the camera because if you have a a camera focused on people at an airport and the crowd is moving past the camera you want the crowd to sound like they're moving so yes an editorial the genius editors know how to pan all that and do it but it's really great when we can add to that and make the sound really sound like it's moving and we do all sorts of really fun things um a fun movie we did enchanted um there was a big ball scene where everybody was dancing and we were out on a huge sound stage and uh, recording stage. And we all coupled up 
and we danced. We all waltzed and woo, you know, did all the fun things. So we all danced with everybody on, you know, on the stage in circles, <laughs> dancing around just like they were waltzing. And it sounded amazing. And it was so fun because everybody was like, this is the funnest day I've had looping ever because we're dancing, you know. Ah. So sometimes we get to do really crazy fun things like that. Was uh, were dance skills required on that casting? No, call? no, you just hold on and dance in a circle. <laughs> That's so fun. Um, so, for somebody that that hasn't done looping, what requirements are there to become a looper? Um, well, like I said, I really think that you need to you need to really want to do this. Looping mm -hmm. isn't something you just get into for the money or that it's fun. You won't get hired. You really need to be something that everyone needs for their roster to hire you. So it's really important to have your improv skills, be able to do great research skills. And if some people are uh, technically inclined in certain areas, I have people who are actual doctors and nurses and who have been in wars and who are soldiers. And I have all different walks of life people who are mm. now actors. And so it's really important to let someone like me know <laughs> that you have a background in something you know, that right, right. as well. But uh, being able to do your research, being able to come up with the things that you have to say, um, always being happy, you know, be fun, come to the stage excited to be there. Or now since we're online, <laughs> you know, be awake, you know, have a <laughs> coffee and get online and let's go. We record virtual now. So um, it, it's a whole different world and dynamic for people now because you can live in different areas. You don't have to all live in LA. So it's really opened up to a lot of people. Let's talk about that because um, that is, it was such a huge shift for every industry. Um, how, how did the pandemic directly affect um, looping for features or looping in general? Yeah, for everything, even voiceover, everyone was a bit stunned at first. And yeah. so, um, we thought, well, wow, we're going to have to figure this out. There's, we have to record because they will only allow one actor on stage, you know, at a time. And so it's, it's since changed, we can get three or four sometimes on a stage if they've had COVID tests and everybody's in their own little boxes. Um, but then I can't be in front of them directing them because then they're breathing on me. So I have to be on zoom. So we have all different kind of ways we've come up oh. with that, but I've, I've had a great experience working with Matthew Wood, who's a wonderful editor up uh -huh. at Skywalker, and he is really a genius. <laughs> he has come up with uh, a way to take Source Connect and connect like 12 of us connections all together, and we can all hear each other at the same time. We, we're all on Zoom, so we can see each other. We can see picture, and uh, so we can loop to it. Um, and we, it's fun when we first hook up in the morning so that we're able to all see each other and wave and, you know, hey, your hair is down to your waist. What happened? You know, it's <laughs> You know, wow, look at the roots, you know, so we, we all have fun uh, being able to say hi. It's kind of been our, our own way to reach out and touch someone. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, um, but we, we have been doing pretty much everything that way through Source Connect and working at home. And a lot of people scrambled in the beginning to get home setups put together yeah. that didn't have home setups. I had one because I'm a voiceover talent mm -hmm. as well. So um you know, a lot of people had to run out and get a good mic and get a recording program, get their computer, get a booth set up, uh, be able to record at home and know how to do it. So that was a learning curve at first for a lot of people. But the people that really wanted to do it snapped up and got it done. Yeah. Max um, Middleman yeah. says that Terry knows her stuff. Best loop group leader <laughs> in the game. I love and, uh, Max. I haven't seen him in a while. I know. And Susan <laughs> Trish, uh, Max is a, a, a guest on the show back in the earlier incarnation, like wow. several years ago. Um, Susan Trish, uh, Trish L says, amazing. Um, so do you think as more and more people are getting vaccinated, there will be any kind of return to stage or do you think this is the new norm? I think for the video games I've done, a lot of them would like to stay virtual. Yeah, I think a lot of them get more work done quicker than having to go to a stage and have everybody out there when they can do it quickly this way. Editors have had to learn new ways of uh, editing, you know, 10, 12 tracks and making it one instead of one, all of us on one track. So there's been a learning curve there. Um, yeah. I think that with the COVID vaccination, you know, it's still not 100% safe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So 
I'm not sure what's going to happen. I, I think you'll see something start to open up. But then again, not everyone's vaccinated. And yeah. there's some people still scared to go out on stage. So it's still a little bit like, hmm, I, I'm really not sure what's going to happen. I think it's going to take still a little bit while longer before that would open up where I could have, you know, 12 people out on stage together. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so just to double back on that, um, you also, before the pandemic, you were pretty active doing workshops. Justine Huxley says yeah. your workshop was so helpful and that she was working with you. Um, <laughs> you know, I, 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 workshops was a much more integral part in, you know, training people to come up as well as, you know, um, teaching people and people are always curious to learn more. Is, is there any kind of virtual workshops happening or any future plans for that? You know what? I was going to start doing virtual loops uh, sessions um, kind of the end of last year as uh -huh. we got going kind of over the summer. And then I had so much work. I literally couldn't do it. And I had to be yeah. able to be able to do my voiceover career as well as looping. And so right. I, I just couldn't do it. There was just so much happening, but I am going to do some. I know everybody keeps asking um, because we have a new way of looping now virtually. There are a lot of things that need to be discussed and people need to try. And there's, um, a lot of new questions. There's a lot of new ways that we loop now virtually that's very different. Even if I send you to a stage like Igloo and we have six people out all on their own stages, there's still a protocol for how we do that. So um, I will do, uh, I will do a seminar. <laughs> I just got to get it together. It's just been really yeah. busy. So, but I, I will, we'll get back into it. And I love doing it because I meet such wonderful people and, uh, you know, get to see new talent and what they can do. And it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It, it's so, do you find that, uh, on a scale of, you know, certainly some sessions are, are easy and we just connect via source connect. Um, but it sounds like this might be more, uh, technical or intense than your average recording session. Do you, do you think that's true? Yes, I think you. there is a learning curve um, for you first to set up your studio at home, <laughs> as you know, yeah. and get that set up. And then I think learning to use Source Connect in and making sure you're recording correctly. Um, for the sessions I do, we don't really have to record our own tracks. We do with video games, and we will send that backup track into the editor so they have a backup track. But a lot of the times, it's just a direct feed that they're picking up our track. Uh, but you do have to watch your game. You have to make sure all of a sudden you're not peaking and too loud. A lot of uh, people who have tried to do some loop group things together virtually, they are on bad mics. They have... They're yeah. not watching their games. Things are hot. The editors can't use the tracks. So it's been really critical for me with my group to be really cognizant of that and make sure it's not happening. And so we've kind of come up with ways to be able to uh, pinpoint when people are peaking and do things over and over until, you know, it stops. Um, but yeah, there's a, a learning curve, I think, for sure. Is it, do you think it's made your job more stressful? Um, it did at first because <laughs> it was like, wow, what are we doing here? Um, but now it's very easy. It, I'm in the routine of it mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and it works really well. So, and also if I send people out to stages and we're all on in, you know, in different stages recording, that's a different way of recording as well. So everything's just different. I think, I think yeah. being okay with accepting that it's going to be different for a while will be better than everyone saying, you know, we've all got to get back on the stage together. I don't know when that's really going to happen. It'd be great, but I just don't know when. So. Yeah, and there's probably nobody does, right? I mean, no. <laughs> at this point, it's all just... No, it's going to take some time. Um, so, and how often, how quick is the turnaround um, range from when you loop the movie to the movie then being released? Well, generally, I come at the end when the picture's locked, so they're not going to mm -hmm. make more picture changes because if we loop something and they change the picture, then they throw it out and they've wasted their money. Yeah. So we come in at the very end when everybody is, you know, racing to get things done. I've had situations where we've recorded things and the editors literally stop and take tracks and quickly send them in as fast as they can uh, to um, get them cut in the film. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. um, we, we're at the end, probably three weeks to a month. We're probably right at the end as it's getting mixed in and then the picture gets mixed and it's done. 
and it gets shipped out. So it's, it's towards the end. But uh, sometimes I've done shows where we've had to be in early. I've had some animation work uh, features who have wanted to have us come in and loop early so that they had something to draw to. And they had fun characters, little incidental characters they needed voices for. So I brought people in to play all these fun characters and uh, they would animate to that. And then the next time we would come in and see them, it will be drawn and up there and have more of a world together. So it's been a helpful uh, technique to, for the um, animators as well to have us come in early. So is, is, I mean, is that different than Scratch or the, or the voice is actually going to remain in the picture? You just might be redoing it. It's still the same characters voicing. The still, yeah, still the same a lot of the Scratch voices get replaced mm -hmm. um, in case they're not in the union or maybe they really want something different or maybe one person did 10 voices and they want to <laughs> change it. So that will get replaced. Um, I do a lot of recasting there. Um, mm -hmm. I do a lot of incidental character casting as well. So for the animated features, if they... You know, they have a role, um, you know, towards the end, it just has a few lines or one line or something. I'll cast those for them as well as for the loop group to do as well. What have been some of the highlights of your career? Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, there's well, quite a lot. Uh, it, Disney's been such a dream to work with. I mean, oh. th th I just skip down the street when I'm on the lot because it's just, it's, you know, it's a childhood place that I worked in, you know, at the park. And so Disney's really been a dream. Um, Frozen, I think, was the first uh, real huge animated feature that was just, you know, a shocker to see it on the stage and how amazing it was and the music yeah. and just everything in it. You felt like, I'm really doing something here today. This is a, you know, this is a film that's going to live on. So Things, films like those, I think, are really, you know, uplifting and having our first job at um, Pixar and working on Coco and, you know, The Incredibles 2 and, and working on these movies, you know, are going to stay around for a long time. And your kids, your grandkids and theirs will keep watching these movies. I think that's really a highlight for me is films that, you know, are going to be around for a long time. And you just feel like, wow, that's a destiny movie. You know, you've accomplished yeah, something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, the the legacy behind some of these films. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know anything about the history of loop groups and who looped Snow White and who looped Cinderella? Was that around in the early days of Disney? I didn't do those then. I believe mm -hmm. the first, what I've been told, is the first loop group was done on Jaws back in the 70s. Wow, so, so it's really, really recent. I think Walt grabbed people to do things in the background okay. that were placed then. I don't really know for sure, but I do have a connection to ask that. <laughs> but uh, I think Jaws was the first one to uh, loop. I remember actually seeing Jaws in the theater with a, one of my darling, lovely friends, Elise. And uh, we uh, literally jumped out of our seats in the theater. <laughs> but but uh, who would have thought then seeing a movie and listening to it and then thinking when you grow up, that's what you're going to do for a living. You know what I mean? Work doing the looping. He was like, what? So that's, that was really fun. Um, but yeah, it started a long time ago, about in the seventies. Um, oh, I, I wasn't <laughs> I sure if you were good. Through. So, I mean, I just kind of yeah. think that's such an is interesting testament is like, there's, there's this through line in sort of every interview we do that when people are following their dreams and following that, the source of their light, they end up kind of fulfilling this uh, ultimate dream that they didn't even know sometimes was the dream or was, the, was that, you know, destination? Yes. I mean, I, I think I knew as a child, I really wanted to be in the business. Mm -hmm. I really uh, was trying so hard to go into law school or, you know, be a lawyer, but I just was drugged so into um, entertainment and yeah. voiceover and singing that, um, that I just, had to go follow that direction. And I think you kind of know deep down in your heart where you really want to land and what you want to do, but it's, it's hard to pursue it. It's, there's so many no's and there's so many issues and problems that come up and you just have to keep fighting and do as many as you can and do the best that you can. Every time I take on a film, I know I'm going to have to spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours casting and um, getting things together and people together and getting to the stages or virtual recordings. And so it, it takes a lot to just, you don't just boom, do it. <laughs> it's done. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of uh, work. I can't let people down. 
So they're spending 30, 40,000, 50,000 on ADR and I have to deliver. So there's pressure in that way, but it's, it is really, um, it is really amazing and heartwarming. I guess I could say to say, yes, I'm doing a dream job. It really is a dream job. And I'm so grateful and I'm grateful to everyone that hires me and I'm grateful to the talent that I work with. They're, they're so fun and they, you guys keep me, you know, laughing and going and, you know, I have some gems that I would love to put on my charm bracelet of you guys and carry around with me because it's just, it's just such a wonderful day. And it's so amazing to, um, I've had Tom Kenny on stage. I've had some really big actors on stage and to just sit there and watch them perform. And you're, you know, you just, it's amazing. It's amazing to see a lot of the really amazing people work and to be in the same room with them is just really a gift. Well, I think it's, it's really, it, it, I think I speak for many of the people that you work with that your gratitude and your generosity shine through and, to what you do is also very stressful. I mean, certainly I can only imagine um, the pressure that comes when people are finishing up a movie, very expensive, unsure how it's going to land and the pressure mm -hmm. that you must be experiencing as a result of that. But um, your your gratitude and your kindness is something that is in your DNA. And I think that oh. um, we're all very, you know, people are grateful that to have that warmth and that, um, that kindness, especially, you know, when we're all doing something that can, can get a little challenging at times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. So. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, were you kidding about the charm bracelet? Do you have a charm? I want to see. Do you have, do you have a charm? Oh, no, I don't have it on, but I'm just saying, I feel, I feel like you guys, I could make you like into little charms and carry you around. So it just, <laughs> such a cute idea. you guys make me laugh. It's so much fun to see you perform. And you know, when you are doing the firewall in the emoji movie. So if no one's seen that, you better go see it and listen for Allison. Um, <laughs> But I mean, you blew him away at the mic. You know, that voice came out, the, uh, everything you did, it was just, it was phenomenal to watch it. I'm sitting there going, yeah, yeah, go get him. <laughs> you it's know? so funny, Terry, too, because like certain, you know, uh, and I think if Max is still on, he can speak to this. Like some of us voice actors that are starting to get on TikTok and share like the thing that we just do, you know, that's sort of just in our DNA and that thing that we do. And then to see people react in such a positive way is kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. um, whereas like, you know, when you go to a surgeon, you're like, oh my God, you can do brain surgery. And they're just like, yeah, this is Tuesday. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's kind of, we're used to being behind the scenes. And um, then to see that the people that you can really brighten people's day with just doing your thing. Um, I don't know. It would be interesting to see some more. I mean, you can't, you're can't. you under NDA so often, but to see kind yeah. of your work and what, you know, a little peek into what you do, I'm sure people would be very curious to see that. But, yes, um, I need to start posting a little bit more of it, but I'm so sworn so to busy. Secret, secrecy and, um, you know, I find out the endings of movies and go home and go, oh, <laughs> you can't say anything. So, uh, yeah. So uh, it's it's hard, but I I um, will try to post now that things have kind of come down just a little with getting us all together yeah. here virtually. But uh, post more about um, some fun things that are going. Yeah. yeah, I think people would love to see that. Um, so for anybody that is just tuning in from Terry's side and might not know what this is, uh, this is Allison's Wonderland. It's a weekly interview show where we go. Uh, through the looking glass into the world of animation and video games. And every week we interview everything from show creators to voice actors, ADR. Um, we're learning about, last week we had um, David Shear, a storyboard artist, come on. So we're learning about um, how cartoons and video games are made um, from the bottom up. And um, next week's guest is Ryan Crago, who is the creator of Arlo the Alligator Boy, an animated feature for Netflix. It's a musical and it's amazing. It just came out a few weeks ago. And it's also going to be a series. So tune in wow. next week for that. Um, I also want to point out down at the bottom, there is a little question box circle. Um, if you guys have questions for Terry, um, we're going to wait. We'll, we'll save um, time for about five minutes of questions at the end. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them in the box now. Um, let's see, let's see. I mean, I'm just so blown away. Um, Despicable Me, Ryan the Last Dragon, Star Wars Squadrons video game. I was in that game too. Uh, Frozen 2, Curious George, Secret Life of Pets, 
Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, Law and Order, Maleficent, Disenchantment, Mandalorian, <laughs> WandaVision. <laughs> um, have you had um, uh, any any top projects you wanted to to talk about or any any of the shows that were the most fun for one reason or another? Um. Well, I think some of the, the dancing on stage is always really fun. Yeah. Anytime we get to really get out of the box and do something fun like that has is, is been a lot of fun. Um, creating creatures for the Star Wars creatures. films has been a lot of fun. How uh, does that work? Stuff. Yeah. Um, I had to audition for the director as well for some of the things that I have voiced <laughs> in those uh -huh. movies. And, uh, you know, I think um, when we get to do other than just standing and doing Walla for a background scene, when we really get to perform and do the incidental characters and the bigger things, that's when I think everybody gets excited and the fun rolls in. Yeah. Can you tell yeah. us about some of the fun roles that you've done? Oh, sure. Um, so um, I was one of the voices of the caretakers in one of the Star Wars movies. You know, they look like little nun frogs running around on the island. Yes. So yes, that's me. I know you wouldn't guess the voice with what that voice was. <laughs> So, Can you do the voice for us? Do you remember? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's very deep and loud. Yeah. Um, so uh, I uh, also revoiced uh, one of the little boys that's in the last Star Wars movie. It opens up with the one with Ron Howard when he directed uh -huh. it. Yeah, so um, I'm hit the part of the little kid's voice that has a British accent. He's a thief running through the village in the beginning. And um, so there's all sorts of fun things that I've stuck my voice in my uh, into. <laughs> so it's been fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think a lot of highlights of uh, Frozen was really a standout for a lot of us and yeah. um, the Pixar films and just uh, everything. It's kind of funny. It's kind of like you can't pick one because everything is just great and fun what people are making these days. You know, Moana was amazing. It was amazing to see my, my lovely talent on Coco you know, all my Spanish speaking talent, all the natives, they were all there and oh, they were so much fun. You know, everybody um, has such a great day. And um, so I think I, I can't pinpoint just one, but I yeah. will at some point, everybody always asks me, what's the one show? And it's like, I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you also, you cast um, Apex Legends. Yes. Um, so ta ta talk to us about that. Justine's been on the show. Elle was on the show. Um, Elle Newlands, Justine Huxley, who are both um, actresses that are in Apex Legends, a very, very wildly, wildly popular video game. Um, yeah. so how, how did that come about? Did that was that a because you cast the principals as well as ADR? Or? No, just Apex Legend doesn't have ADR, so it's just all principal casting. All principal. So I cast um, video games and I cast mm -hmm. the principals on it. I've done probably 35 games now, I think, something like that. Um, so I've been doing that for years. And that's a lot of fun casting the principal voices. And so Apex Legends is a lot of fun because all the characters have different accents. You know, yeah. they're from different areas of the world, if you look at all the characters. Mm -hmm. So going on a big search for someone Scottish, I knew right away that Elle would be fabulous in this role. So I yeah. put her up to the creatives for that, and I was so glad when she got it. So, um, but yeah, so I look very hard, just so you guys know, as voiceover actors that are listening to me, um, I'm always looking for foreign languages and accents and things that you do. And you can always run to my website and go to the um contact area and you can fill out a uh, new actor form and just send it because it comes as an email or email me through the website so that you can um uh, uh tell me what you do and all the things you do and i do search for it because i will search through there for people it's the terry douglas adr voicecasting.com i know it couldn't be longer but that's my screen credit it all makes so sense it's like, <laughs> Yeah, it's a long one. So anyway, um, yeah, so actors should really keep checking in there. And sometimes I post now on the website right now, I'm looking for native Colombian Spanish speakers. So uh, I try to open up as much mm -hmm. as I can to help other people to reach out to talent that I don't know that mm -hmm. would love a chance at doing it, you know? So I will post in there in the casting call area when I am looking for people. But Apex Legends is a great game and it's a great team that puts that together. Um, and it's really fun to uh, see the talent as they're growing and growing and they do more and more and more seasons of it. Yeah, and, and do you find, um, since you are a little bit more of a behind the scenes capacity, have people been flocking to you in droves as well or are you kind of flying under the radar? <laughs> 
Oh, to be casting for that? For for Apex. Um, just oh. the fans. The there's so you know the there's a lot of fans of the game, and I'm wondering, are they uh, finding you out? <laughs> Not yet. You're like Ellie. Don't blow me up. <laughs> 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 yeah, I have had people find me and they send me emails that they loved being the game or, or, you know, or other movies, they will find me and send me emails and things I get them from across the world. So uh, it's been interesting. I thought, wow, <laughs> you know, I did that. That was pretty fun. So uh, it's fun when they reach out. It's it's really great to see fans really love the games, you know, or the other films or what. 30 million players or something, something like yeah. that. It's mind blowing. <laughs> um, well, I want to save a couple uh, minutes at the end for um, questions. Do you mind um, for my Instagram stories? Do you mind just saying um, I'm Terry Douglas, you know, and then please watch Alison's Wonderland or something like that just for my yes. Instagram stories? Okay, thank you. Do it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Terry Douglas. Please, please, please watch Alison's Wonderland. She's amazing. And I love her. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh, that's so interesting. And please let us know when you, if you are going to offer the virtual loop group, because I'd love to share it with people. Um, somebody also was asking, um, do you have an e-blast for workshops? Um, so I put my announcement for my workshops on my, um, my page. So you okay. can go to Terry Douglas ADR voice casting.com. So go to the website and under mm -hmm. seminars, and that's when I'll post when we'll have one right now. It just says there's nothing coming up. So, so when I get ready to do it, I will put it on there. And there's also a PayPal link there. So you can quickly grab a spot. They oh. fill up super fast, like within a day. So if you are interested and you do see them, uh, try to grab one. And I try to make it very affordable for everyone and not a money maker. It's, it's something that I really want people to learn. And if people mm -hmm. want to learn and they've never done it and they're scared to death, do it anyway, because this is your area to learn. It's your time. It's your chance. So take it. Do you work with children at all? Do kids, do they have a great kids? Yeah. I hire kids all the time. So uh, the youngest one I've hired was about two years old. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I hire kids all the time. So I'm constantly looking for kids. I have wonderful kid loopers. They do such a great job. They blow me away when they are up at the mic and the things that come out of their mouth. They're so funny. Uh, but yes, I I use them on a movie, Luca, for Pixar that's coming out, right? <gasps> Oh, yeah, so that looks so cute. My son's kids. best friend is Luke, named Luca. So we're, we're definitely, it will be probably, it comes out the day he graduates from preschool. So I have a okay. feeling we'll be going to see it on opening day. Yes, and I, I do kid seminars. I, I'm not sure how to do that virtually yet, but uh, we might do one. But I do do kid seminars. It's, a, it's great to get them learning because they really, you need to know what to do when you're on the stage. You can't just show up to a stage and never have looped. You need to know how to walk around on the stage and what we do and the terminology. Uh, and you need to try it. You need to try to voice match someone. You know, we'll show you uh, some a principal on screen and have you try to voice match and put the lines back in or change their voice. And I do it for animation characters as well, which is a lot of fun. That's so fun. Um, oh, somebody, uh, Tr Susan Tr Trichelle just put um, a link to your. Oh, thank you. Um, Very yeah. nice. I um, will get to it, I promise. <laughs> so uh, we did talk, I mean, most of the questions that are popped into the box, um, I mean, this is, you know, you're not the voice of Poppy on Trolls. <laughs> um, <laughs> did you have any other fun little characters? The tro Trolls is such a fun movie. Were there any other Trolls yes. that were memorable? Oh, I've done fun stuff on Trolls. Played a ton of little characters in the background from flowers to birds and uh, mm. the card that opens up and, and yells, um, surprise or whatever it was but uh yeah, yeah, yeah so i'm kind of all over that movie with my voice and little characters and funny flowers and blah, you know really weird sounds and stuff so that that movie's a riot it's a lot of fun that's so fun um and then okay so we did talk pretty extensively about how to get into looping so um we're not going to revisit that question but if you missed um, we kind of peppered it in throughout, so feel free, the replay, I'll go ahead and post it afterwards and you can go and access the replay. Um, now we talked a lot about work, um, but I'm curious too, how in this industry, which, um, is, you know, there's no business like show business, how do you keep yourself inspired, um, through the challenges of that pop-up? 
Well, I love what I do. Yeah. So it's, it's um, I think the love of your craft and the love of what you do. I love the people I work with. I love the people that hire me. They're, they're just so fascinating. And the uh, talent that I hire, you guys are just so much fun to work with. So I think I'm just inspired by, oh, it's a new project and it's a new experience and new people and mm -hmm. coming to the table. And so uh, that's inspiring for me. And I, um, I love my home and hanging out with my two little Pomeranians and my husband. And uh, so I try uh, as much as I can. I'm an oil painter. I love to paint and do fun things. And yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah, so I try to do uh, a lot of things. I watch, you know, different shows and TV and movies and try to stay informed. And <laughs> I, didn't I think know when you, you left, you become a yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. What was that? You cut off a little bit. Oh, I think when you love what you do, um, each new show is so inspiring that, you know, it sparks you to keep going, you know, yeah. to keep your momentum up. That's beautiful. Um, what kinds of things do you like to paint? Oh, yeah. So um, I started painting quite a few years ago. Um, I paint like the old master. So I don't paint modern. Um, I paint photorealism. So I'm like a Dutch master with it's like a gessoed canvas. It's very slick. So like Rembrandt, you know, that type of uh -huh. thing. So I'm painting like the old Dutch masters with the flowers. And my favorite subject is always roses. I don't know why. <laughs> oh. but I paint a lot hours uh and i've painted a lot of little kids on the beach and all sorts of things like that so i need to find some more time that i can finish my paintings <laughs> so i need to get time to do that yeah, yeah. A lot well, of well, oh sorry i do a lot of casting at night so it kind of takes me away from doing the fun stuff a little got it well you've been so generous with your time and this has been great to hear all about exactly what it is that um that you do in the world of adr casting and we're so I'm so grateful to have you on the show well thank you allison it was fun to chat with you and it's nice to see you <laughs> i know it was so good to see you i hope you have a beautiful day and thanks everybody for tuning in live we'll see you next week for ryan Crico. okay thanks terry thank you Bye bye Bye. <laughs>